Welcome to Before the Bid, your connection to some of the world's best livestock sales. Stay tuned as your host, Andy Howe, takes you coast to coast, stopping along the way to talk with producers about their operation, their livestock, and of course, their upcoming sales. Let's get to it. Welcome, friends, to this Before the Bid podcast. And on this one, we're going in a little bit of a different direction than what we normally do as we normally do livestock podcasts. This one, we are going to talk about a land sale. And this land sale is going to be in Indiana, and it's going to be in Rush County, Indiana. And there is going to be an auction held with this land, and it's going to be an online auction. And it's going to be held through Halderman Real Estate and Farm Management through their program and through their website. And so that's one of the places that you can go and look for the information on this sale. And we're going to be talking about the Swain Family Farm Sale. And on the phone with me tonight, I have the head auctioneer for Halderman Real Estate and Farm Management. I have Rusty Harmeyer on here and a good friend of mine and a a friend of mine that uh, I've learned a lot from. So uh, excited to have Rusty on here. And uh, Rusty, welcome to the podcast, man. Hey, Andy, thanks. I appreciate the invite and being able to be on here with you. Well, Rusty, you've been around the auction business for 22 years and started out uh, in the livestock business and, and kind of started out in the trenches. And now you're you're the lead auctioneer here at Holderman Real Estate and Farm Management. And if you would, tell us just a little bit about what you do there in Rush County and your auction program and a little bit about Holderman's as well. Sure, sure, Andy. Yeah, I've, like you said, I've been in the auction business for 22 years now. We started out with Harmeyer Auction and Appraisal Company, which is which is still in existence, but we started that out 22 years ago and just started out appraising real estate and doing personal property and estate type auctions, farm equipment. We did some livestock auctions. We played in, in the sheep arena for a while and, and did some goats and, and a few pig auctions. Sure had, as, as you well know, a lot of experience selling production cattle and club calf type things. Uh, been around the, the auction business in, in lots of different capacities for a lot of years. But nine years ago, or a little less than nine years ago, I got involved with Halderman Real Estate and Farm Management and and really got involved just as a real estate representative when I first got involved with these folks. And Halderman is almost a 100-year-old company now. They just celebrated their 92nd year and started out their headquarters is in Wabash, Indiana, but, but have 50 reps or maybe actually 52 or three reps scattered over the eastern Corn Belt. Indiana is our major footprint, but we have uh, reps in all throughout western Ohio. We have reps throughout southern Michigan. We have some farm managers throughout the United States. Literally, we're kind of managing farm ground almost from coast to coast. And we do have a farm manager that uh, manages a a few acres up in Canada. And I say that jokingly because I think he manages about 200,000 acres up there. (laughs) Oh, wow, yeah. But of course, you know, 5,000 acres is just a patch up there. (laughs) So uh, they, they farm some big acres up there. But, uh, you know, the Halderman family started out with uh, grandfather Howard F. Halderman, and then Robert came on board, and, and now Robert's son, Howard H. Halderman, is is now at the helm, and, and Howard's son, Joseph, is now involved. So we're fourth generation Halderman family involved in, in the auction business, the real estate business, Farm management was where they started, but quickly found a need for farm real estate sales. And they do over a thousand farm real estate appraisals a year as well. So very, very vested family into agriculture, especially here in, in the Eastern Corn Belt. And I, and I got involved with them just for a real estate brokerage identification. You know, you if you're selling houses, you're involved with Remax or, or one of those type franchise. And, and I, I'm not really interested in, in selling residential real estate. I, my roots go back to farmland and that's where I wanted to 
kind of stay at. So Halderman was certainly a, a name that had a lot of recognition. And and I'd made the trek up to, to Wabash and, and met with Howard and, and Pat Karst, their vice president of real estate, and met Robert Halderman. And, and after spending a couple hours there in the office, I knew that's where I, I kind of wanted to hang my hat uh, in the real estate business. So I was tickled to death when they extended the invitation to me to get involved. And like I said, about nine years ago, we got involved. And then probably six or seven years ago, they asked if I would be interested in taking over a new position that they created called uh, their director of auction operations. And I applied for that position along with some other folks and, and was very fortunate to be selected as, as their director of auction operations. And then eventually that turned into me being asked to be their lead auctioneer. Mm-hmm. We have four or five other auctioneers in the stable. Obviously, you're one of those, but uh, we've got different auctioneers that that work with us uh, throughout the state, but I'm kind of the guy that's in charge and got to make sure that we've always got an auctioneer to handle our our real estate auctions. Right. Put a a lot of miles or used to put a lot of miles on the road. Uh, Seemed like you were gone two or three nights a week doing Halderman auctions. Yep. Back before COVID, we did about 75% of our auctions were live in person. And you're right. It was not uncommon for three nights a week. I was out selling a farm on, in some place in Indiana, Ohio, Southern Michigan, or we've been over in the, in the eastern edge of Illinois doing a few farm sales as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even what did one up in Montana as well? You got in on that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good friend of mine, J.K. Kinsey. We met each other several years ago, and and he had the opportunity to sell just a little bitty ranch. It was 10,000 acres, Mm -hmm. and uh, that was his first big real estate auction that Mm -hmm. he had got so he asked if we'd be interested in coming out and helping him walk through that process and which i was honored to be asked and we certainly took advantage and went out there and helped jk and and you know it's just a a little different world than what we see here in indiana uh you know we we offered it uh, in a multi-par auction, but they were in sections, not fields. So <laughs> right. we were we were selling them in 640-acre parcels out right. there. Right, yeah. And Halderman was involved with that one as well. With, yes. With you yeah, being they involved, were, right. Uh, Howard and, and Pat both made the trip out there as well as uh, as one of our, our lead IT person at the time. Uh, she made the trip out there with us as well and and real enjoyable. It was kind of a whirlwind trip. We went out a day, the day of the auction, and then come back the next day. But it was it was certainly enjoyable, and we got to meet the Pease family and work for them and, and see some neat country there in uh, southeastern Montana. Right. Yeah, and you, you talked about somebody that I IT person that comes out. There is a lot of people up there at the Holderman company that make this thing go around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, there is, I think there's seven folks that work out of the Wabash office. That is kind of the, the back end or the or the support staff for all the reps that are throughout Indiana and Ohio and in southern Michigan. We've got one lady that does nothing but uh, work with the farm managers and make sure that all of that is is taken care of and the bank deposits and you know all of that mm-hmm. that goes into the farm management side and and then of course we've got Abby Chapman which is our director of marketing and our graphics designer we've got a couple other support gals that just kind of handle uh, all the paperwork get everything done in a timely manner and make sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and, and I jokingly tell them that they are what makes me look really really good and smart because <laughs> when I goof things up, they catch it and make me fix it. So right. uh, without Wendy and Jessica, uh, who knows how things could get, <laughs> get kind of goofed up. Right. Yeah, and what a what a great team they are to work with. And, and what a great team if, if somebody's looking to purchase land or sell land or anything like that, you know that they have got everybody's back in the Holderman Company and, and going to make sure everything is absolutely as right as possible. 
Sure, you bet. And, you know, whether you're an acquisition client, we do a fair amount of 1031 exchanges Mm -hmm. uh, in which we've seen a lot of that here the last couple of years where with the growth in and around the bigger cities and and they're buying up some of this farmland at significant value. And of course, those those guys want to roll that back into some farmland and and not necessarily just right there in their neighborhood. You Mm -hmm. know, they, they typically are looking for good, productive, tillable land that are going to be able to be leased out. And if that's in their neighborhood, that's great, but they would look outside their neighborhood. And and with the representatives that we've got scattered over the Eastern Corn Belt, we've kind of got an ear to the ground of, of what is for sale, what could be for sale. And, and we certainly help facilitate some of those acquisitions and, and getting folks from the other side of the state or maybe even from another state involved and introduced to the folks that's got some land for sale. I know I had a track of of land over in Fayette County back this summer and and we thought we had that sold to a farm family out of Iowa Mm -hmm. that had sold some ground for developmental purposes and and was looking to reinvest that and and then right at kind of right at the last minute they found some a little closer to home. That's just part of of, of one thing that we do mm-hmm. is the acquisitions and and walking folks through that as as well as you know when just like what we're talking about the Swain family and local folks I, I've known Phil and his brothers now for quite some time and they decided that they wanted to go ahead and liquidate the family farm and contacted me and of course I'm right there in Rush County and and all their six brothers that own that property mm-hmm. and uh, the closest one lives on the north side of Indianapolis. So, you know, they all grew up in Rush County, but they've all moved away and lost contact. So I've been able to to provide them with uh, the boots on the ground and and know all of the uh, the neighbors and, and the significant players that should be interested in this property, as well as uh, some of those 1031 exchange clients and acquisition clients that are looking for, for farm ground, and, and we're able to bring the Swain property to that market. Right. And we are talking about the Swain property here on this one. And we are talking about 32.59 acres of farm ground there in Posey Township in Rush County, Indiana. And Rusty is the lead auctioneer for this. And it is going to be an online auction. And it is going to be held on January the 10th. And it's going to start that morning and then conclude that evening and so rusty you have a couple other guys that might be able to help them out with any questions that they have on this farm yeah dave and uh, michael bonnell father and son team uh, they actually reside in northern bartholomew county just outside the small community of hope but Michael and Dave, uh, Dave's been in, uh, been a Holderman representative for more than 30 years, and Michael's been involved with them. I think he's about ready to celebrate his 10th year anniversary, and both of those guys and, and myself, we work together a lot on farms in, in Rush, Shelby, Decatur, Hancock County. We've got a really good working relationship and, and work together a lot. So anybody that maybe doesn't know myself but has a relationship with Michael and Dave, they can certainly reach out. And, and talk to them. They're very knowledgeable about this property as well. Right. Yeah. Michael was on the well, on one of the podcasts. We talked about a cattle sale a year or two ago. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, Michael and Dave. They're both in the purebred shorthorn business and and do some shorthorn plus and and mm-hmm. some of that. And they sell some club calves and and whatnot. But yeah, Michael and Dave's been certainly no stranger to to your podcast before right yeah and if you want to we're going to talk about a few things about this farm if you want to follow along again you can go to halderman.com halderman.com and you can look down through there on the real estate sales and you can find the swain family farm and you can kind of look at some of this information with us. There's some pictures on there. There is some of the information on there that we're going to go through. But there's a couple things that we want to highlight about this farm. And, and first, Rusty, will you just give us a, if, if they're just listening and maybe can't go at this time, give us just a little bit of a rundown of the landscape and, and the way this piece is set up. 
Sure, Andy. Yeah, it's uh, there in, in the western edge of Rush County. U.S. Highway 52 borders it along the north side. County Road 980 borders it along the west side of the property. The worst part about this property is there are only 32 acres of it. It's a great piece of land. It's basically all tillable, and it's got excellent soils. It's it's basically all Treaty and Crosby soils. It's got a whoppy of 158.1. It's been farmed by the same tenant now for more than 20 years for the Swain family. Phil Ramsey and, and his family's been farming this farm for many, many years. So just a great piece of farm ground. It's got just enough slope to it that, you know, the water will get away, but yet it's basically flat and level. It's it's square on three sides. Of course, US 52 runs at an angle there just a little bit. So you the north side, it does run it at an angle just a little bit. And and we, we sold the house and at about not quite three acres off of the farm uh, back this summer for the family. And and we squared up the, the house and barnyard. And, and if they see the drone footage or some of the aerial pictures, it's kind of hard to tell. But mm-hmm. well, we basically went just straight south off the road down and followed the grass and then went straight west back to County Road 980 West and squared it off. So it really, when we was doing that, when we were surveying it off so we could sell the house and barnyard off of it, we obviously knew that we were going to be selling the farmland and we wanted to certainly make that as easy to farm as we could. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, very easy farm to farm, good square corners and and straight rows, not a lot of point rows and and things of that nature. Right. So what you're saying, if if they look at those pictures and and maybe they don't look at the outlines of the maps that that they have, they look at those pictures, it looks like there's that little finger kind of in there beside the house and the little farm acreage there, that little finger that goes in there is not involved. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, there's just, oh, I'm going to guess it's maybe a maybe a half acre Mm -hmm. of the field that was between the house and and County Road 980 there on the west side of the house. And that is now part of the house and barnyard. So we we squared that off. So the finger is not really involved in, in the 32 and a half acres. Right. Okay. Well, good. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we cleared that up. And yeah, the 32.59 acres, and and it talks, if you look on there, it says something about there's only 32 acres that are tillable just because there's a little bit of right away there. Correct. Right, the the road right away, and and I I pull those acreage amounts off the property record card, and and you know we we talked earlier about the road right away, and on the state road right away in Rush County, it's a seventy five foot setback mm-hmm. right. road right away and now of course you can farm they're farming almost right up to the road right uh so there's there's for sure 32 acres there's probably when you plant it you're probably going to come up with about 32.4 acres right. is what you're going right. to plant right. but uh, according to the property record card there's about a half acre of okay. of road right away right yeah just wanted to clear that up yeah it says on the website it's 32 tillable and and 0.594 of the the other acres which are the road right away which yep. which again most of that can be farmed as well yep absolutely so you mentioned something a minute ago and and kind of just went on by at the with the soil description and the whoppy points if if we're not familiar with the whoppy points can you explain that just a minute yeah, I, I can, Andy. And it, this was done some time ago through the Farm Service Agency. And, and at that time, the Soil, Water and Conservation Agency, they went together and throughout the entire state of Indiana and basically assigned a production value for every soil type that is found in the state of Indiana. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the WAPI is a, an acronym for Weighted Average Production Index. And, and it really doesn't mean anything other than it's just kind of a, a benchmark. Okay. Uh, there again, this farm is mainly Crosby and Treaty soil, uh, and it has an average WAPI of 158. And we utilize this number a lot in appraisals, and we also use it as data points and track the sale price per WAPI point. So on this farm, and, and let's just say that it brings $10,000 an acre just because I'm, I'm not real good at math. But, you know, basically, it, if you took the $10,000 an acre and divided that 158.1 mm-hmm. for the WAPI, then that will get you a WAPI dollar value 
of $64.47 per WAPI point. Okay. And, and like I said, that, that really isn't anything significant other than it's just a great way to track land sales, not only within the county, but from county to county, or obviously from, from one side of the state to the other, because there's ground that is going to be better. There's going to be ground that's not as good, has a lower WAPI value. And what we have found is by doing this and collecting this data, that basically in the last 18 months, tillable farmland in the state of Indiana have been selling from 80 to to $100 per WAPI point. Okay. Now, there's some outliers there, and usually those outliers, there's a significant reason why right. it either brought more or less. But when you punch in, I don't know, I think there's about 75 data points on that graph. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can definitely see a trend line in, in land values, and it's been going up now for the last 18, almost 24 months. And you can see from the spring of 21 to the fall of 21, a pretty significant increase. And and it shows it in that data points. It shows it on that trend line. And for those of you that maybe have been to one of our Ag Outlook meeting or has been on the Halderman Zoom meeting when when Howard does his Ag Outlook meetings, he talks about this WAPI number and us tracking it and and brings out the the value and when that value really took that big 35, 40% increase increase there in August of 21. Mm -hmm. So it's just a great number to use for tracking and trending and things like that. That that doesn't mean that this farm's only going to produce 158 bushels of corn. Right. That's not what that means. Right. Realistically, this farm's probably 200 plus bushel mm-hmm. corn production, but it's just a number that is assigned to all the different soil types throughout the state here in Indiana. Okay. Rusty, what do you know about one of the things that uh, when we get to buying a piece of ground or an acreage, who's the neighbors? What do you guys know about the neighbors of this property? Well, I, of course, I know all the neighbors. I, I, well, I shouldn't say all the neighbors. There's a, a adjoining neighbor to the west, a, a lady that lives in Nebraska, and I'm sure she grew up in, in Rush County, and, and her family still owns that farm, but she she now lives in Nebraska. But but all the other neighbors, of course, are, are folks that I know, and, and the vast majority of them, I, I've got their telephone number and my cell phone and could call them by their first name. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, most of the time, most of the time, the adjoining landowners or the immediate neighbors typically have the greatest interest when we sell a farm. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the neighbors are always going to buy it, right. but we certainly go out of our way to make sure that the neighbors are contacted. I contact these folks in person. They got a brochure in the mail several weeks ago. They got a a brochure and a note, a handwritten note from me here just about a week ago, just following up to make sure that if there's any questions or any information that they might need or want, Mm -hmm. that I would be happy to provide that. And then either the end of this coming week and or right before the auction, I'll reach out to those immediate neighbors again Mm -hmm. and and more than likely i'll just pick up the phone and give them a call and and just say hey you know i just want to remind you the sales coming up and and if there's there again if there's anything any information that they might need or want uh certainly be able to provide that to them right so right and good quality farms next to it and around it and and all tillable ground right around it as well yeah that whole square where actually you can probably go about two or three miles east to west from this farm Mm -hmm. and and probably four or five miles north to south in this farm and it's all good productive soils and and big percentage tillable farmland out there a lot of strong neighbors and just in a good area just in a real good area right yeah and you can kind of see that on the drone footage there at holderman.com just good good all around it as well so rusty what else do we need to know about uh, this ground what else do we need to know about the auction uh, anything else we need to know about this piece well I, I really don't i don't think so andy i mean we've kind of touched on all the highlights i know you've brought out the auction date january 10th mm-hmm. the bidding's going to open at 8 a.m 
we use the, the soft close and that will, the bidding will start to close at six. Mm -hmm. And for those, uh, maybe somebody that's not familiar with the soft close, the way we have this set is if anybody bids between 5.55 and six o'clock, the bidding will extend to five minutes. So in, instead of closing at six, it now will close at 6.05. Mm -hmm. And it will just continue to extend until nobody bids for five minutes. And, and we do that to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to raise their bid. We don't want that opportunity. I've had to bid for the last 15 minutes and then right at the last second, right. somebody takes me out and I don't have the chance to raise my bid again. So mm -hmm. the soft close is a way to make sure that everybody will have every opportunity that they want or need to bid on this property. You brought out, you know, the website is halderman.com and, and just click on the auction or property listings tab and, and the Swain farm is going to be the first one click on the picture of the Swain farm and it can register to bid. You don't have to register to watch it. You can watch the bidding just by clicking and uh, clicking on the tab and, and watching the bidding. So it's uh, there again, 32 and a half acres, basically all of it tillable, good productive treaty and Crosby soils. You know, it's kind of once in a lifetime opportunity to like daddy always says you get one chance in your <laughs> lifetime to buy the farm next door right and january 10th is is their opportunity that might be the day right there's not an open house with this there's there's not a scheduled open house we did okay. it by appointment only okay and and there again i'll be more than happy to meet somebody out there today it might be a little soft i don't know that we'd want to drive over the farm today but if if the ground's dry or frozen they're certainly welcome to drive over the farm although it, it's not that big of a field and you right. can see it from either the county road or the state road you can pretty much see all all the way around it plus you can always go to the website and right. watch the drone footage as well we uh, we flew this farm after they harvested, and I believe it was in soybeans this year, uh, but we flew this farm after harvest was complete. So you really got a, a bird's eye view of, of exactly what the farm is. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and the good video footage, uh, as Holderman always gets of those operations and of the farms and yeah very good footage and you can see everything around it it's got the map on there uh, it's got the lines on there where this farm is going to be and and where the property lines are so it should be very easy for them to see yeah yeah rusty i appreciate you joining me here on this one and and telling us about the swain family farm here that's going to be for sale on january 10th well, Andy, I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be on your podcast, and, and we'd certainly encourage anybody that has any information or needed any information to, to reach out to myself or Dave or Michael Bonnell and feel free to ask any questions. You can send me an email. There again, go to Halderman.com. That's the easiest way to contact us. You can right. contact the office or my my contact information's there as well. We'd certainly be glad to provide any and, and all information that anybody might need or, or if anybody is is considering selling a farm my goodness it's it's sure a good market for it's it's a seller's market right now for certain so we'd be more than happy to talk to them and and whether it's in my neck of the woods or or any place we've got reps throughout the eastern corn belt and if we don't have a rep right there in your neighborhood we've got alliances with a lot of different real estate professionals that we can uh, reach out and and touch base with and be more than happy to try to facilitate working with you any way we can Absolutely. Appreciate it very much, Rusty. Hey, Andy, thanks so much. I appreciate it, and we look forward to talking to you down the road. All right, sounds great. We appreciate it again. Swain Family Farm, 32.59 acres, January 10th. Halderman.com is the place to be. We want to thank Rusty for being here on Before the Bid, and we want to thank you for listening to another edition of Before the Bid Podcast.